Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on the globe. I'm Megan Aplon, bringing to you fur news by the minute, the fluff, the raw, and sometimes the rough. In this week's news, dog siblings unexpectedly meet for the first time and their parents were as surprised as them. People.com featured adorable Mott Diego. Kelly Bender wrote about his parents adopting a dog for him. Jane Salazar and her husband got Diego last year. They gave him an Mbark DNA test to find out his breeds. A Tennessee couple saw he is mainly a pit bull Australian cattle dog mix. They also discovered he was sadly going blind. Diego's ophthalmologist advised them to get a support pooch companion. They searched rescues and found Poppy Dixie, who looked identical. It turns out they have the same biological parents, but are from different litters. The brother and sister instantly hit it off. I love that. We always love it when a sweet story of families and their pooches getting together, particularly during a pandemic. That is just lovely. I love that. It's great. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. No, seriously, um, this warms my heart, warms the cockles of my heart. Next stop, guest correspondent Dennis Neal is joining us. The possum journalist and cat father is sharing his take on animals with their humans. Dennis? Hello, I'm Dennis Neal, and I want to talk to you about dogs and cats and COVID-19. Pets are the heroes of the COVID crisis. When we dropped out of life and shut down to stay inside, our pets stepped up and saved us from insanity. I lived alone in the lockdown and my kitty Casper became my constant companion. We're talking five or six belly rubs per day. On a lot of days, my conversations with Casper were pretty much the only contact I had with anyone. We love our pets so much that more than half of us worry more about our pet's health than our own, according to a recent survey. Our dogs and cats, and our parakeets and cockatiels and pet snakes and the rest, they gave us someone to talk to and someone to take care of in the COVID lockdown. And sometimes in a crisis, taking care of someone else can be a great way of diverting your attention from fearing for yourself. Wow, that really warmed my heart. It definitely is a sentiment that has been echoed throughout the world during this crisis. And I do agree, Dennis, that they've been there for us um, tremendously. And I think we're better for it as people, right? Um, gosh, I love your hair too. Is that appropriate? <laughs> Sorry. I just feel like you must have a hair team. <laughs> but I don't. Next stop, pampering pets is normal. But a recent survey shows pricey caregiving still shocks parents. Virtual field correspondent Julie and senior canine correspondent Teddy join us with the numbers. Hi, McGann. That's right. Research firm OnePoll and insurance giant MetLife interviewed 2,000 humans on their spending on pets. They found two in five parents find pets to cost the same or more than children. Nearly two-thirds say fur babies are more expensive than they initially expected. The survey showed the average parent spends $4,500 on their pet's basic needs per year. One-third barked the visits can cost $500 over their budget. As pets age, top health concerns include mobility and cancer. Many say they are not familiar with pet insurance options. Ultimately, the study revealed what is no surprise. Like Dennis mentioned, more than half worry about their pet's health more than their own. Same goes for us, McGann. Back to you. Thank you, Julie and Teddy. Our fur team looked into another survey. This one showed pets can really rule the household. Cleaning product company Valeda and one poll questioned 2,000 people. More than half said their dog or cat has their own designated spot on the couch. 44% share their bed. 
one in five eat their meals with their pets. Nearly all respondents let their fur babies lick or kiss them and some take baths with their pets. Okay, see that's the part that I have a problem with. I love pets, but I'm not taking a bath with you. No, 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 no. We're not bathing together. Next stop, if meeting a kangaroo is on your bucket list, you may want to go to Ohio. The Cincinnati Zoo just announced its new encounter at Rue Valley. Visitors can have some private time with the marsupials. That's exciting to me. Guests can pet and feed them as they learn about the species. Tickets start at $250 for two people, and you must be at least 10 years old. Ah, oh, wow. $250 is nothing to get to spend time with a kangaroo. I mean, I'm so very excited. I've loved kangaroos ever since I was a wee bit of a child, really. And that's a wrap for us this morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are on the globe. I'm Megan Aplon. Be sure to snip out the latest headlines you need to know from the Pardemic Network, brought to you by The Muttley Crew. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Muttley Crew channel for more possum entertainment. <coughs> this thing makes me feel dyslexic. I can't quite figure out which side of my face my bangs are. My fringes, fringes, sorry. Don't want to lose the Brit in me. Next stop, guest correspondent Dennis Neal is joining us. That was a bit too regional. Hold on. This was very refreshing to have a professional like uh, Dennis on. Um, we've had very varied people that I thought were very, very, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure why we have Alexandra on. I'm just saying, um, she doesn't seem to fit into uh, the pandemic network, family situation. Um, just throwing that out there. Dennis, shoo-in. Everybody else, love them. Um, Alexandra, not sure she has quite the cheekbones for this position. <laughs>